Welcome to episode 20. In this episode, we will notch out the transom and install the splash well on our 16 foot modified Brockway skiff. I had a lot of fun doing this bit of carpentry and can't wait to share it with you. So let's get busy. I began by hoisting up the aft end of the boat. This was to provide clearance for a trial fit of the outboard motor. Here the transom is suspended with about 12 inches between the floor and the bottom of the keel. I centered the outboard on the transom and clamped it tight. I adjust the running trim of the outboard until the anti-cavitation plate was parallel to the lines of the keel. You adjust the running trim on this old Evinrude by inserting the trim pin through one of these five holes. I've selected the middle hole and that made the anti-cavitation plate parallel to the keel line. Next, I clamped a 2x2 two two to the underside of the cavitation plate, or the anti-cavitation plate, and then extended it until it hit the back of the boat. I'm trying to find where the level of that cavitation plate is to the back of the boat in relation to the bottom of the keel. I marked the position of the anti-cavitation plate with a, with a sharpie on the transom there. And then I measured from the bottom of the keel and determined the anti-cavitation plate was about three and one quarter inches above the bottom of the boat. The bottom of the boat I'm defining it as the bottom of the keel. In general we want the anti-cavitation plate to be even with the bottom of the keel and up to about one inch below or the bottom of your boat if you didn't have a keel. I chose to have the plate, the anti-cavitation plate, about three quarters of an inch below the keel. Therefore the top of the transom where the motor is currently resting must be lowered an even four inches. In other words the transom notch will be four inches deep. Now we must determine how wide to make the transom notch or the transom cutout. This is determined by making sure the outboard can fully turn within the transom cutout without binding on the sides. Here I have the tiller pushed hard to starboard. Here I have the tiller pushed hard to port. This is the more critical side because the tiller is on this side of the outboard. Looking down, this pencil mark here is about 15 and a half inches from the center line of the transom. It looks like it'll provide plenty of clearance. The standard transom cutout, according to Glen L. Boats, is 33 inches, or 16 and a half inches on each side of the center line. This is about 15 and a half inches, so 16 and a half inches, another inch over. That seemed fine with me. So I went with the standard 33 inch cutout. Here I have laid out vertical lines right here and right here and this is the center line. Each of these vertical lines is 16 and a half inches over from the center line making a total transom cutout width of 33 inches. I then clamped an old level to the transom. I use this level as a straight edge for my circular saw. This cut requires a plunge cut to be made with the circular saw and 
<laughs> I have to tell you, I'm a certified ninja when it comes to the circular saw. So if you are at all uncomfortable with this, just use a jigsaw. Uh, last weekend, I met Steve at a friend's birthday party. Steve is a U.S. Marine and was a residential house framer for 33 years. Uh, years ago, he was doing something similar to cut out a beam pocket over a window and lost his pinky finger. He said it was his wedding ring that jammed the blade in the guard and saved him from losing additional fingers. So please, take this warning of mine seriously and be careful. After making the vertical cuts with the circular saw, I finished it off with a hand saw. Typically you don't want to make sharp 90 degree interior corners like this because of stress concentrations, but I will be adding a healthy epoxy fillet in this corner to take care of that issue. Uh, you'll see that later. Here I am measuring the final height of the transom cutout. It measured 20 and one half inches from the bottom of the plywood planking up to the, the bottom of the trim out. So not to the bottom of the keel, which would add another inch and a half. And Glen L recommended for long shaft outboards uh, a 20 inch transom height, plus or minus a half inch. So we're also within the range of Glen L's recommendations. I then rounded over all the sharp edges along here with sandpaper and took the grinder and some sand, sanding block and also rounded over these external corners here. The deck of the splash well will be attached to a 2x4 along the transom. Here I'm getting the miter angle for the end cuts of the 2x4 that will span between these stern posts. Here are the layout lines for the 2x4 along the transom. The recommended minimum clearance from the bottom of your transom notch to the top of your splash well is 6 inches. That's the minimum recommended. Because our deck will be half inch thick plywood, I have laid out this upper line of the 2x4 six and a half inches down from the bottom of our transom cutout. Prior to cutting the notch in the transom, I wanted to make sure six inches, the six inch minimum, would uh, provide enough clearance to clamp up the outboard and turn these screws. This line here is five inches down from the top of the transom. So an additional inch here will, pro will provide more than enough clearance. On this particular day, the 2x4s at the home center were in bad shape, but I didn't want any of those. So I actually bought a select grade 2x6 and ripped a 2x4 out of it. Here it is in position. Got that 2x4 nicely mitered in there, and the, the top edge of it, again, is 6.5 inches down from this edge. I attached the 2x4 by screwing through the exterior of the transom every 6 inches. You could do every 3 to keep with the theme of the boat. <laughs> Uh, but um, I use two and a half inch long deck screws because the transom is two layers of three quarter inch plywood that's an inch and a half and the two by four is an inch and a half so we have three inch a three inch stack up of material here so a two and a half inch screw will keep you from poking out the the other side now cutting the deck for the splash well can be a real head scratcher. You have a lot of things going on here. You've got these posts in the way, you've got the sides and they're sloped, um, so on and so forth. So, and the splash well 
is 90 degrees to the transom, so it's coming up at an angle. So I thought of various ways I could teach you how to do this, and in the end, I decided to make a full-size template from some scrap half-inch OSB plywood. I think this will be the most straightforward way for you to do it. The scrap I had, well, it's not scrap, I was keeping it because it's pretty good size, but it was 24 inches wide, so it was half a sheet of plywood. And I cut it to fit snugly between the stern posts resting on the 2x4 we just installed. That way I didn't have to figure out all the geometry here. I just cut a nice rectangular piece to fit in there. That's pretty easy to do. So here, here I am on the port side. I measured the gap from the edge of our template to the side of the boat. I did it down here, I measured this distance and I also measured up here where it's wider. And that gave me the taper to roughly cut a piece to fit. We're not shooting for exact right now, we're just looking for something that'll fit. And then I left several inches, it's several inches long over overlapping this plywood. Here is the piece on the starboard side. So this piece is clamped and laying over on top with plenty of overlap. And it actually came out pretty close. I have it butted up to the front of the, the post here to fill in that gap. And the picture makes it look like it's tighter there than what it really is. It's just a straight cut from here to here. I didn't actually cut any curve in it. So once you have this, you got a scrap piece butted up to the post, you got it kind of pushed over to the side, you got a clamp on it. Now you can scribe the line or the curvature of the hull on this plywood. Here I am scribing the line between the side of the boat and the plywood. Here I just used a little utility blade holder I carry in my carpenter's belt. A small scrap of wood would work just as well. You're just sliding this along the side and then marking a line. So here's the line that I've scribed that will follow the curvature of the side of the boat. I also used my bevel gauge to find out what the angle was between the template or our deck here and the side of the boat. So I set that bevel gauge on there against the side, screwed that tight, and then then I carried it over to my miter saw and found the angle to be 8 degrees. So here is the piece after cutting along the scribed line with an 8 degree bevel using my circular saw. Now we're getting a really nice fit. Here is a shot of the underside. No gaps. Again, this is just good practice. In reality, we'll be using epoxy, so gaps are okay. But it's always good to practice. Shoot for perfection. Aim small, miss small, right? Now we can take a pencil and scribe along this edge of the plywood so that the piece will fit down in there flush. Here I am scribing with the pencil. I installed a two inch wide splice strip of OSB plywood just using some inch and a quarter deck screws, four of them. You could also use a hot glue gun. And here is our port side piece installed. I butted it hard up against the side of the boat and hard against the front of the stern posts and then just screwed it to our splice strip. Here you can see the full size template with both side pieces installed and the little splice plates to attach them. I double checked 
that the template or the deck of our splash well was remaining perpendicular or 90 degrees to the transom. Now notice this corner, once this was leveled or, or made 90 degrees using that little support, temporary support I have on the front, I noticed the edge of the deck extended above the sides. So I decided to rip this to a narrower dimension and I chose 22 inches because 22 inches is the recommended minimum splash well depth. Here I set up the fence to rip the template to 22 inches wide. After ripping it to width, I installed a 2x4 or a 2x3 under the leading edge. Now notice the template is upside down. The splice plates are on the top surface in this picture. So this 2x3 is actually being installed on the upper surface. Now you could use a 2x2 two two here or a 2x4, it doesn't matter. And you'll see what this will be used for in a second. So here is the template reinstalled using just this temporary support. This is actually the cutout from the transom. So I have it turned on end and I have a little 2x2 two two across the back and a clamp. That's all I'm using to support the front edge of this splash well or this template. And then we have a 2x3 attached to the top now. It doesn't extend to the sides, there's plenty of gap here. It just stiffens this, makes it nice and flat, and it's also going to be used to help support the actual 2x6 framing member that will be permanently installed across the bow. I then clamped two scrap 2x3s vertically behind the 2x3 the we just installed. I later put a screw through these 2x3s and remove the clamps. Now we can clamp our 2x6 which will soon become the framing member at the front of our splash well. So we can clamp those to those vertical 2x3s and this 2x6 now is in the exact angle it needs to be to fit up on our splash well at a 90 degree angle. You can also notice we can remove the temporary brace because this 2x6 is resting on the shear clamp and it's clamped to those vertical 2x3s which are screwed in to this 2x3. So no temporary support needed and you can push up or lower this and clamp it to whatever height you want. So once you get the splash well right where you want it, it's 90 degrees to the transom, then you can clamp that, that vertical 2x4 to your 2x6 which is resting on the shear clamp. Now for the fun part, figuring out the compound miter cut and the length of that 2x6 framing member. I began by measuring from the top of the deck, or our temporary template here, to the bottom of the 2x6 that's resting on the shear clamps and found that this 2x6 needs to come down 5 inches. The 2x6 has a net width of 5.5 inches so I scribed a line a half inch from the top using my square. So this line right here is five inches up from this edge which will eventually be resting on the top of our splash well deck. To get the length I used a square to draw a vertical line up from the inside edge of the shear clamp. 
The idea is to get this corner right there. So it'll this whole 2x6 will come down 5 inches and this corner will be touching that edge of the shear clamp. There's just another picture without the square in the way. Next we need the bevel between the sides and this 2x6. We then transfer that bevel so that it goes right through that corner. So this bevel or this angle matches the side angle and it's running up right through that corner and intersects the top of the 2x6 a little left of this vertical line, just a smidge. We also need the fore and aft bevel between the sides and the 2x6. And then we transfer that to the top of the 2x6, not picking up at this vertical line, but at the end of this sloped line, that's where we want to draw, draw in this, uh, this bevel, the fore and aft side bevel. Now we're on the forward side of the 2x6, and I use our bevel gauge to get the side angle again and we're going to draw in that. So there's the line. It must pick up the front of the fore and aft bevel and then come down at that angle that we just took with the bevel gauge. I hope that makes sense. This is very similar to what we did with the bottom timbers for the boat. Then I cut the compound miter using a handsaw just like we did for the bottom timbers in a previous episode. Here is the fit up on the starboard side. Now notice this little notch you'll need to cut down here to make allowance for the side panel. I measured that notch to be uh, a half inch deep here and seven eighths of an inch deep here and of course it's half inch depth um, because the side panel is half inch plywood. Here's the fit up on the port side. Notice how the 2x6 sits about a half inch higher than the top edge of the shear clamp just like we measured. Remember it only needed to go down five inches and a 2x6 is five and a half inches so we got a half inch sticking up here on the aft side. This will be planed off later. Once satisfied, I used the template to lay out the shape of the actual deck for the splash well. I ripped the deck to 22 inches wide. Then I cut it to length. But don't forget, the cut from here to here needs to be at an 8 degree bevel to match the flare of the sides of the boat. Here is that 8 degree bevel. Next, readjust your circular saw back to zero, a 90 degree cut, and cut out the notch for the stern posts at each corner. Here is the starboard side clamped into position. There's an overall view. Now notice I've screwed the aft edge down uh, to the underlying 2x4 and I used 1 and 5 8 inch long deck screws spaced every 3 inches on center. Now here I'm making sure the 2x6 running across the boat is also square to the splash well deck before I screw it in in a similar manner. The deck is screwed into the bottom of the 2x6 using 1 and 5 8 inch long deck screws spaced 3 inches on center and I also installed two 3 inch long deck screws into each end through the shear clamp 
So one up here and one down here just above the plywood side. I placed a level across the boat from side to side and scribed a line where the top of the boat is from shear clamp to shear clamp. I did this on the aft face of our 2x6 and on the forward face of the 2x6. This way I knew exactly how much to take off by planing. I removed the bulk of the material with the electric hand planer. Here I am checking for straightness and doing some fine tuning with the block plane. Ah, a fine day of making shavings. The next morning, I came out and drilled a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter hole for drainage of the splash well. I just used a spade bit. I really like the simplicity and look of this splash well. So remember, there's the 2x4 framing member between the stern posts at the aft edge and this 2x6 framing member at the forward edge and half inch plywood in between. There is no blocking under the plywood along the posts or along the side of the boat. Here it is epoxied into place. Now here's a tip for you. After you scrape off all the excess epoxy that squeezes out, I recommend wetting a rag with denatured alcohol and then you go along and wipe down all the surfaces. It gets off all the residue and globs so that way you don't have to sand anything off the next day. It's all nice and smooth and wiped down and cleaned up. There's the starboard side after epoxy and the port side. And let's not forget the drain hole. Next I used a PVC pipe and scissors to cut a nice healthy radius onto the corner of this plastic spreader. This will be used to make the uh, some nice epoxy fillets along the sides. The ends of the splash well deck do not have any underlying framing like I mentioned so it's important to install large epoxy fillets along these edges. I just did the upper surface you could do both surfaces on top here and underneath but my experience is the upper surface is all that's needed if you make a large enough fillet. Here is the other side. I also epoxied in a one inch brass drain tube for our splash well. I also added, notice, a fillet in the corners here of our transom cutout. This will help prevent them from cracking. I then filled all the screw holes with the green epoxy filler and sanded it flush the next day. Here it is, all finished. I really enjoyed building this splash well. In fact, I've enjoyed this entire boat build. I love the simplicity, the strength, uh, and the work boat look to this vessel. So, I hope you're enjoying it too. Uh, please leave comments. Next, we will see Pez and paint the interior of the boat. So, thanks for watching, and I look forward to your comments, and God bless you, my friends.